Assalamu alaikum students. How are you people? Are you alright? How is your TEFL 2 proceeding so far? Yes, are you really enjoying this subject? I am sure you all are enjoying this subject. Why you are enjoying? Yes, it's a good question because now we are in the second phase of our the course that we started in the last semester. Right? So last time we were talking about TEFL, we talked about the methods, right? And we talked about some skills. And this time we are at the micro level. Fine? That's why we are talking about lesson plans. We are talking about role of a teacher. Right? We'll be ta talking about micro teaching and so on and so forth. Right? So this, this, um, the course in this semester particularly helps you how to teach language in a class how to have an excellent classroom management this is what you see we are working for and so far we have had 12 lectures and today we are going to start lecture number 13 right today we have another lesson plan like we did in the last class so we had a lesson plan la last week we talked about and today we are going to talk about another lesson plan which is very important right now let's review the previous lecture that we had and move on to the next lecture so students you remember in lecture number 12 we talked about a model verb must and our focus was how to teach this model must and particularly our focus was on must I right when to use must I right and when to use you must and when to use when what you so on and so forth right and uh, we in fact try to to focus on teaching this model verb because we are of course discussing different lesson plans so not only you you have come to know about the use of the model verb must but we also in fact uh, discussed how to teach this model verb and you know that is a precedent that is an example right that once you have to teach different model verbs if you are particularly if you are an error analysis teacher if you are a writing teacher so how how you can help your students how you can teach this model verb in the best possible way and you remember that our aim was to again three stages to present to practice and to produce what this forms of the pre I mean model verb particularly expressing obligation and the present tenses and we also in fact we uh, our aim was to develop listening skills for specific information and again to check or teach certain vocabulary items this was uh, of course these were our aims that we had in our uh, last lesson plan and again we saw what were our teaching aids you remember we used uh, blackboard or the whiteboard and we use a uh, cassette player we use cassettes and OHP and this and that so this was the area and why we gave all these I mean elements because once you make a lesson plan you need to be clear what are the exponents of language you are going to teach to, to students and what would be the procedure right how many stages would be there what activities would be there right and then which teaching aids you will be using in your class and then of course we saw the procedure like you see warm-up stage we discuss is very important stage because warm-up stage prepares students for the experience that the teacher is going to discuss in the class so warm-up stage is very important stage warm-up stage uh, prepares the minds warm-up stage uh, removes the boredom warm-up stage helps students in fact remove 
information gaps, communication gaps, right? And particularly if, if, if you are teaching language and, and you are teaching language uh, in the evening shift, right? So warm-up stage, of course, helps, helps, the, helps you being teacher and it also helps the learners to prepare because once there is a warm-up stage so student in fact they, 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 they take a sigh of relief right so they, they relax and that really helps them to to absorb whatever is going to be presented and later on practiced and of course production this is what you see that we do in the warm-up stage and that's why we even being a teacher whenever we teach we should make our habit that you see the warm-up stage should be an important part right why it's important part because you see uh, it it creates a conducive environment for for the learners right so once the environment is conducive learning would be easy right learning becomes difficult if environment is tough or the serious environment so learning becomes fun if it is if it is in an in an ideal environment so then we talk about that you see how teacher uses a picture how teacher writes on board and how teacher asks questions and how we have listening practice and then we saw all three stages what happened in the presentation stage where things are presented the modal verb must is presented and then we saw of course the practice stage and finally what production stage and the production stage there was a role play you remember that fine so that lesson again in the, we talked about what so this was the previous lesson that we saw I mean how to teach a modal verb must and what could be a lesson plan for your uh, convenience for your understanding again I would say that lesson plan that we made it, it, it gives you an idea right so it gives you a framework fine so that once you make your lesson plans you can take help and you can uh, bring innovation in that or you see the point is this can be a model for you otherwise wherever you teach or you are teaching you see you have to see the environment you have to see your resources it is not hard and fast that you must have a cassette player right or you you must have the multimedia you must have computer whatever the available resources are right the good thing is that if you teach language by being in your resources if your management can provide you necessary teaching aids yes it's ideal it, it's good but if not it doesn't mean that you cannot teach language right so a good teacher is the one who in fact teaches language in the available resources fine however he can request the management for 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 the pr provision of necessary uh, teaching aids but if they are not available for some reason you know there could be some financial constraints there could be some some resource problem there uh, particularly in the uh, in, in the spoken centers where 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 in fact uh, at times the owners do not have in investment to provide you each and everything but even bef without these things you can teach language well so this was our previous lecture on on teaching how teaching must Today our lesson plan is on what? Yes, you all make request and you respond, right? So you must have seen on the, on, on the screen that making and responding to request, so we have a lesson plan on that. So I mean how to make a request, fine? And then how to respond, how to reply to a request. So if you have to teach this language exponent, how would you teach? right which which le lesson plan right of course w will you make and how will you make and what would be the necessary elements of that lesson plan these things you have to you have to see and of course again there is a model in in front of you this model again would would help you 
how you can do that and of course you can you can improve this model right you can you can bring changes in this model by keeping in mind your available resources by keeping in mind your organizational environment so this lesson plan of course we have a class students of course 20 students are there right near the end of their first year of English right and then aims are there as per of course you see that uh, what is this lesson plan about I gave you the answer and and how many students are there so to level is a must student right so when you teach language so you must know level of your student because knowing the level helps you to proceed your your teaching well if you are unaware of the level if you are unaware of the understanding of this student their strength in the class so things things would be a bit difficult right however if if you, if you know your your class strength if you know resources in the class fine so things would be easy for you and you can perform your jo job more successfully so aims in this lesson of course to again three stages to, pr to present to practice to produce what polite request again if I compare it with the previous lecture over there again there were three stages but point was that over there we were teaching model verb here we are teaching of course here we are presenting we are practicing of course we are producing polite request and some appropriate polite responses right so this is one aim second aim is to revise the use of the simple past tense for narratives when you have to narrate some things right so narration is there and we will try to revise what the use of the simple past tense whenever you have to narrate and third aim is to revise some any a uh, one right with oblique I have uh, given you so my dear students this is very important this is the second lesson plan we are talking about and you must have seen that aims have been mentioned right and why aims are given importance because once you keep aims in mind so your subsequent procedure your other steps would be accordingly if you are not clear about the aims so your further proceeding of the class would not would be difficult I hope you understand students yes so whenever you make a lesson plan for for teaching your the skill that you are teaching so you must know what is the level right where you are teaching and second thing is that what are the aims of teaching right the aims that I gave you to present to pra practice of course to produce what polite request and their replies and of course second thing is to revise find the use of what simple past tense and for narratives and third thing is to revise some yes any of course a uh, and one an exponents for example question is could you lend me some could you lend me a pan right could you lend me some is that clear some water for example right could you lend me a, a, a ballpoint right and please right and of course yes of course yes certainly I mean reply the question is could you could you give me your pen right could you give me some pages right could you give me some of course uh, in fact uh, accessories computer accessories and answer could be yes of course yes certainly I'm afraid I haven't got any I haven't got one is that clear you see so this is what mean exponent that we will be of course learning how to teach got my point are you with me so so far we talked about that what level we are teaching what are the aims of teaching right 
and then of course mean which exponents particularly right an exponent I told you that making request and then of course mean replying to those request now again you see when we make and request and respond to a request so when we make a lesson plan for it we need to know assumed knowledge of the students right the students had already been taught have got my dear students I mean assume knowledge is a must in your lesson plan because you know right what has been discussed in the class what has been taught to the, to the students if you know it then you can proceed well if you are unaware of such so the previous knowledge of the students so you may not be able to proceed well right so that's why assume knowledge should be kept in mind when you teach this uh, language or when you make your lesson plan so again I would repeat that what level you are teaching what are the aims of teaching and then exponents right and then what is the assumed knowledge like here in our case students have been taught yes have got right so I mean have got countable uncountable and were familiar with the use of a some one any and with the vocabulary items broke is that clear this is what students have been taught and they know about it now as usual teaching aids you have blackboard or the whiteboard you have realia game for free production stage right and time of course the class is 55 minutes to 60 minutes approximately clear students so this is what mean our lesson plan for this uh, making request that level we should know what is the level then what next what are the aims level aims important and with I gave you three aims fine and then what is it of course assume knowledge right and next is aids fine and finally time clear so when you make your lesson plan these things you must keep in mind and here in this case aims may be more than one there are three aims here three aims have been given in fact that to practice to re in practice present right if I say in a sequence to present practice and produce right and of course the other three aims if I go back to you for a while see so revise the use of simple past to revise a uh, some any and exponents could you give me a favor could you help me yes surely course and then what is assumed knowledge what they have already know I mean they they know the use of have got fine and they are of course they know what are countable nouns what are uncountable nouns and of course they are they, they know how to use articles definite articles indefinite articles and of course a uh, some any and of course mean the aids it's clear very simple and then the time approximate time for this class is 55 minutes to 60 minutes now the procedure what would be the procedure very important in fact a good teacher in fact makes his procedure clear right he should know the procedure of the class because knowing the procedure makes the teacher clear and obviously if the procedure is clear in the minds of the teacher so execution would be easy execution would be smooth and if, if it is not clear if, if you don't know in fact how to achieve something if you are if you don't know the process of something so things might be hard for you right so procedure in fact is important that you see you keep in mind the, 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 the procedure of the class how class will be executed how class will move on you must know the procedure clear so here mean procedure is what revision right dialogue about the last weekend it's very simple right 
So whenever you start a class, generally good language teachers, they ask the students about their last day. Fine. If you are meeting every day for that skill, so you can ask about their yesterday. Since we are revising, our aim is to revise use of past simple tense. Right? So you, you ask the students what did they do yesterday? And of course the question is in the past simple tense. So you expect answer in past. Clear? So you can spend 10 minutes. I mean you can ask the students about their weekend. What did they do on the last weekend? Or you can ask the students what did they do yesterday? Or you can ask the students what did they do in the last month? Right? So this activity, I mean, when you revise, you have a dialogue. Fine. When first you can ask the students being teacher, they would reply you. Fine. As a demonstration, a teacher can have a dialogue with, with a student. Right? And of course the teacher picks the students who would reply, who would know things. Fine? So that could be the first phase when a demonstration is there between a teacher and a student. Then next, of course, I mean the teacher can ask two other students to have a dialogue. Right? The one student may ask the other about his weekend, about his last day. So they could have a dialogue. And of course, question would be in past and answer would naturally be in the past tense. Clear students? Teacher asks questions and builds up the dialogue with one student. Is that clear? Example, did you have a good weekend? Yes, I did. What did you do? Clear? Yes, I went fishing. I went shopping. Clear? I, I attended a wedding party of my cousin, for example. Clear? So, I, I, I went to a park. Or, I watched the cricket match between India and Pakistan. You see? Yes, really? Did you? Of course. Sure. Positive. How nice. See? So, it's, it's a dialogue. Right? So, this dialogue, of course, between a student and a teacher, of course, help others as well. This dialogue, in fact, opens that, of course, environment. You see, students find it easy, right? Because on the one hand, the teacher is a part of that dialogue. And on the other hand, there is a student who is responding. And this can be done in chorus. Right? For example, a question can be raised from the teacher's part, what did you do yesterday? And they would say in one voice, we talked about this activity. Clear? We talked about river, we talked about a mountain, we talked about a mosque, we talked about a church. Right? So, in this way, dialogue can be built. I hope you understand. So, first thing is, we revise and how a dialogue is there. Then, of course, teacher questions and the student answer, right? Teacher questions, student answer, open pairs, in fact. Clear? So, this you must be clear about this open pair system and then closed pair. Fine? Open is that you see, teacher asks question and the student answers. It's open. Fine? Others may hear it, of course. So open pair. Right? Things are open, right? Teacher asks question to, to the class. Maybe one of the students would reply. Or the teacher can nominate one and he can, yes, clue him and ask him a question. Or he can ask Ali, Zia, like, if I demonstrate you, yes, Mumtaz, stand up and you ask him a question. Right? So, in this way, an open pair dialogue possible or it can be closed. Fine. The teacher can go, of course, means the class can be in groups, right? And then the teacher can go to group A and ask some questions. Fine. And then other groups can have their, their dialogue, can have their interaction 
and there, there, there of course the groups so student ask questions student answer in a group for example if there's a group is there so it's not open it's closed in a group in the open when the question is raised and anybody can answer students report back on what they have found out right student ask teacher about teachers weekend active yes now it's it's report back once the teacher asked the questions now it's a time for the students they asked about the teachers weekend the teacher says you look decent of course maybe the student reply yes fine so once it is the teacher's turn he asks questions and the reply comes and then of course the students ask question and reply from the teacher comes in fact or there is a question answer session between the students in their groups in their respective groups particularly so at least I mean, in a way once the questions are in the past tense and the reply is in the past tense of course you see and then again that you see the teacher talks about that well he is broke because he spent his money on the weekend right so here of course mean the student learn what does this broke mean this this expression broke mean that teacher is penniless why is penniless I'm broke because it was weekend and I spent my of course my of course I spent much money and now I am broke and then of course students learn and they ask others in their groups that well I mean Ali might ask Mumtaz that of course how much money do you have you say I have 20 rupees and in another group maybe I mean Anita asks Zulfikar and says well I, I'm broke I don't have money clear so in this way this vocabulary item broke is taught now these students of course mean that presentation of polite request with affirmative answers with the positive answers how to present polite request when the answers are affirmative marker sentences the teacher question student answers T mean T for teachers Q for questions and the student answers. could you lend me some money see some right so could you lend me some money please right so could you right even I mean would you possible if you are teaching would you or can you would you if you are teaching can you so now here is um, of course we are talking about this exponent could you right so you have to make your plan as per your requirements whatever language exponent you teach clear all right so concept questions on polite forms etc for example which is more polite can you or could you so here you need to explain that could you is more formal than can you you can say I can you could do it fine so again the models I repeat that models can be used for the present and for the past right so but which is more formal yes grammarians say that the could is more formal than can so you need to make it clear to the students that when should we use could and when should we use can and as far as far as formality is concerned right how this can and could are different then there would be a repetition drill for intonation and pronunciation intonation ups and downs of your voice can I can I when your voice rises my dear students maybe it is a questioning tone I work hard don't I see my voice rises my tone rises so this shows that it is a questioning tone I work hard don't I see now here is what I need confirmation I hope you understand so this intonation has also a meaning yes see it has a meaning right yes but it means you are considering it yes mean you are considering yes of course so in this way this tone has a message behind right that's why when you use question tags you see so in question tag one tag would be question right and then of course the, when the tone rises question falls affirmation right so they can be repetitions drill for intonation and pronunciation fact of course 
it can be chorus, group, individual. Right? So chorus me when everybody answers in choral. And of course the group of five, six and the individual. Teacher tells students to ask for something politely. Student question. Teacher introducing polite responses. Yes, certainly, of course, sure, here you are. Is that clear? So in this way, the teacher tells students to ask for something. Teacher, in fact, tells, well, please send me your pen. Here you are. Give me your ballpoint. Here you are. Give me your notebook. Sure, of course, certainly. Is that clear? So in this way, what? There is a, there is a repetition drill and student learn how to make a request and how, how what? There is a reply. So in this way, what is going on? Presentation. Presentation of making request and reply. I hope you understand. Are you with me? Things are easy. Yes? Alright. You know it, these things in fact, just maybe we are refreshing ourselves. So some things you know, right? You know that model verbs are there. We can use these model verbs for asking questions. And you know these models, of course, they can be can, could, might, shall, should, will, would, even had better, right? These are model verbs and the correct spellings are M-O-D-A-L, right? modal verb and I told you in the last lecture that verb is an action word right and the verb is of course in linguistic we may call it a word class one of the word classes and again the verb of course verb may be regular may be irregular right so as far as regular verb is concerned you have its past form and the past participle form similar right reach reached reached whereas irregular verbs in concern you might see there are three dissimilar forms and examples are break broke broken eat ate eaten begin begin begun so see all oh, these are irregular verbs and again, mean if you go on other words, there is a category of verbs, we call them auxiliaries. We may call them helping verbs. And these helping verbs further, they are divided into what? I mean, linking verbs, right, or modal verbs. And linking verbs, I, I mean, might have told you in the last lecture, this B family is M, R, right? Verb to be, right? And verb to be what is MR is the present form of verb to be, right? Was, were is definitely the past form. Been is the past participle form. And being is what? Present participle form. So, and then other way, the modal verbs, they are used to express obligation. They are used to, in fact, advise. And they can be used for the present and for the future sense. Clear students? Alright. So here I mean, again we are going on how to present this polite request. You can spend 10 minutes on it. So what teacher does, he introduces polite refusals. Earlier, a while from now, we saw how to present, how teacher presents polite request. And now what we see that how teacher presents polite refusals language English language is a very courteous language very polite language that's why whenever we talk we, we say excuse me if somebody is busy we don't interrupt we don't cut in right so we always seek people attention right and then you give your viewpoint you give you you express yourself right so that's why here I mean this next phase we see that the teacher is presenting how to, I mean, uh, of course, give polite requests. So here we have seen, I'm afraid, I have got, I have got, I haven't got any. Is that clear? I haven't got any money. I'm afraid. See, a polite way. 
Well, I would love to, but I'm sorry, I don't have. Right? So that's why when even somebody asks for a favor, and, and you see, the one way is you categorically say, no, I don't have. And this would definitely hurt the person. So what else can we do? I would love to, but I don't have. See? Or I'm afraid. See? I haven't got any. See? Here I mean the teacher is presenting polite refusals. The teacher gets several students to ask for things before going on to drilling the responses. Repetition drills, chorus, it can be in chorus, give me money, right? Can be reply, I'm afraid we don't have, I'm afraid we are broke, see? Or in a chorus students reply, then they can be in groups and they can have intra-group discussion where requests are made and they reply or it can be individual clear so drills are required because now the teacher of course is presenting how to refuse politely teacher of course question the student answer student question and the student answer open pair again the activity open pair activities and closed pair activities Mix positive and negative responses. Yes, of course, the response can be negative. I haven't got any. Sure, certainly. Right? To check the students know which response is appropriate to their own situations. Student questions, teacher answers. Student question and student answers, open pair. Clear? So here mean if some answers would be reply. For example, could you come to my home tonight? Well, I would love to, but I'm sorry, I'm afraid I can't because I'm busy tonight. Right? So, would you come to my home next on weekend? Sure, why not? Right? So, again mean that how to make a polite request and how to accept this request or how to reject the request, how to refuse the request politely. Clear? This is what means presentation of polite. Now comes the next stage that is practice. See how again there's a dialogue, right? Planning a party. See I, I, I've given you time for the different stages as well. The previous stage consumed maybe 10 minutes. So again the, the, the strength of a class can help you. If, if, if it's a big class, so time factor is important you need more time for the presentation stage however if you have an ideal class strength so you can give you can give time for the every stage so here is practice how practice is done there is a dialogue right so what do you need for a party vocabulary elicitation if any words are, are new to student write them on on board in fact after checking the students have got the pronunciation including word stress of course correct is that clear this is very important for example there is a party planning a party of course and which vocabulary items you need for the vocabulary items where to go how much the contribution is required fine and then of course you you plan the place the venue for the for the party and all that the teacher reveals dialogue in fact right what happens the teacher reveals dialogue on board or OHP with polite request and responses blanked out. Clear mean that why responses have been blanked out because responses would come from the students, right? It should be written on, I mean ideally if you write those dialogues on the board, on the whiteboard, the blackboard or OHP transparency before the lesson begins and kept covered until this point. Is that clear? I mean, if you are using multimedia, so it's very simple. You cannot scroll that slide. However, if you are using transparency, so that should be kept covered unless you, you move on to that activity. So this is again, while using, I mean, teaching aids, you should not use that aid once it is not being, being needed. So bring that realia, bring that picture, you see, once you need it. 
Okay, now there is a dialogue. You can see here is a dialogue for the practice that I am having a party on Saturday. Would you like to come? See, yes, thanks. But I have got any plates, right? I haven't got any plates. Could you lend me some? Clear? No, these are the blanks have been left out. So I haven't got any plates. I'm I'm going to have a party. I'm having a party. I, I'm going to arrange a party on Saturdays. Would you like to come? Yes. Thanks. Now you ask, but I haven't got any plates. Could you lend me some? Yes, sure. Why not? How many plates you want? And I haven't got a corkscrew. Would you? Could you give? Could you give me one? Right here. I'm afraid I don't have any. Clear? See, in this way, I mean that's there are blanks and students. Of course, now in this way, it's a practice stage. Since these things have been presented in the previous stage, in the presentation stage, so chances are there that the student would, would reply. However, if there is any problem, you can, since it's a practice stage, it's a control stage, so teacher can help them out. Right? If he says, I'm afraid I haven't won, I haven't got any, so you can correct them. There must be a singular and plural in the dialogue and also the affirmatives and negative responses, right? So this is what you have to keep in mind. Again the teacher questions and the students answer. T for teacher, Q for question, S for student, A for answer. Student question, open pair and the whole activity that we had, there could be an open pair or there could be closed pair. Ask students to substitute their other things needed for the party instead of plates and a corkscrew. I mean this thing you can do that. You can ask students what to substitute other things needed for, for the party instead for plates, sample disposable plates. Right? So can we can I can you bring can I bring disposable plates? Right? Well students. So what happens? The teacher even rubs off, of course, more and more of the skeleton dialogue from the whiteboard or the blackboard as students become familiar with it. So once the teacher understands that now they have understood how to make a request and they have also learned how to reply appropriately to a request, so the teacher can rub off. For example, once the teacher knows that you see, they, they, they have learned how to, how to use any, I haven't got any, right? Or would you bring some plates? So teacher can erase that, right? This is what, which stage we are in? We are in the practice stage. Now there can be a writing task, right? In this task, what can happen? Student complete that blackboard dialogue or the whiteboard dialogue in writing. The teacher goes around checking written work. Again, the teacher, since it's a practice stage, so the dialogue are given, the questions may be are on the board and the replies students can write on their notebooks. Right? And and the teacher can have a have a look. He can round, he can take a round of the class and he can see. Now move on to the third stage that is production stage. Now what happens in this stage? Where you produce. And again the time for this stage is 10 minutes. So if I if I remind you that well this there are three stages that we have. The presentation stage was for 10 minutes. Practice again was for 10 minutes. And production stage again we gave them 10 minutes. So this is what a model you have to adjust timings as per your requirements. You have to see the strength in the class. You know the level of your students and you know their, their weaknesses. You know their assumed knowledge. Accordingly, you, you in fact decide on the time. So in production, what happens? Teacher explains game and rules. Is that clear? That which game we are going to play. Right? He gives, he explains the game. And also he gives the rules. For example, in a newspaper, every day you have different games. 
so for those games rules are given right even on your mobile you have different games you have beach rally for example so once you play that game what happens you have what the rules and if you know how to move forward how to stop how to turn right how to turn left you can you can play that game well so that's why when you use games in language teaching so rules must be determined and these rules should be communicated to the students fine students are having a party but need to borrow lots of things for it clear they are going to have a party now right earlier we had a role play but now students are going to have a party and they need lots of things for it now each student is given pictures of four objects and aim of the game is to borrow as many things as possible from the others right this is what try to understand this in this game what happens that each student is given a picture of four objects so there is a picture of four objects right and then and the aim of the game is to borrow as many things from others as possible right and then what happens all the students mingle around the classroom and ask if they can borrow things they need for the party using the polite request clear for example i have got four objects maybe i have a cork i have a spoon i have what a plate i have a glass maybe other students of course what they have they have a cork they have bottles for example they have what handkerchiefs they have tea tissue papers in fact clear maybe a third student would have what would have water clear all other things in this way you mingle around in the class and you request could you give me what uh, a bottle of water could you give me in fact four four cups could you give me four glasses would you give me four disposable tea tea bags tea cups in fact so all these things are there they mingle around and they get it in fact student who has picture of the object requested says yes certainly i have some i have four objects right if student ask me for a i mean a fork so i have that fork with me on my picture or somebody ask me for a for a spoon so i have a i mean fork that spoon on my picture so i certainly show sure, why not so another student is there he has a picture with other objects so in this way you learn in this game you learn how to how to request and how to reply here you are and hands over the card student who has not got the object says i am afraid i haven't got any or i haven't got one is that clear for example if i have a, a picture and my objects are i told you spoon fork and plates if somebody comes and ask me for glass and i don't have glass on my picture so i would say i'm afraid i don't have i haven't got any right i haven't got one clear so in this way you can do that students can also ask each other one question and must then move on to somebody else once mean do you have could you give me or could you lend me a glass so sure certainly or if i don't have i was i'm afraid i haven't got any right so why you need it the question maybe reply i'm going to arrange a party clear students so this can be in fact mean production stage now what are the suggested objects fine again a uh, and in what do we call them indefinite articles right a uh, transistor fine then a uh, table clear then a table cloth a uh, jug a uh, cork screw a uh, bottle opener right an ashtray i hope you understand so again that you see when you teach language of course the use of articles indefinite article is here that when to say right an eye opener and then to say a transistor when 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 to say of course mean a jug and then some records tapes plates glasses cutlery etc 
Clear? The teacher demonstrate games with one of the better students. Clear? Student play the game. Teacher sets a time limit of about five minutes. Student who collects the most objects is the winner. Is that clear? In this way, of course, we saw that in the production stage, they mingle around and they ask for the objects. Fine. And if, if you need the object and I have that object, it means you will get the object. Certainly, surely, why not? And, and of course, the one who gets more objects, he becomes the winner. Right? In this way, of course, we, we play this game. So, dear students, this is what means this lesson plan on how to make polite request. Clear? How to request particularly. And then how to respond. Right? So, here let's review this lecture. In this lecture, we, we talked about making request, right? And again, how to reply request. Now, the question arises, why we are talking about this? Because uh, whenever you teach language, you are a language teacher. So, so, I mean, these are the exponents which we have to teach. But the point is, how do you teach? The one way is the traditional way that, you see, you write on the board and this, you write the answers and of course you make people cram, you make people learn, right? But that may not be a successful way, right? Maybe in the class students would, would learn those exponents, learn those expressions and they would use in the class. But the point is, once they will finish the class, that exponents will be off, see? They will not be able to retain that. So if you use if you use these, I mean the teaching methodology, if you present that exponent in the in the best possible way, right? And then you see you 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 keep in mind the aims of the teaching that exponent, that language item. Fine. And if you think of activities appropriately, so teaching would be easy for you and the learning would be fun for the learners. Right? So, an ideal environment is that when the teacher enjoys teaching and the learner enjoys learning. And this environment definitely it takes time. I mean, you cannot say that, you see, you see, you will, you will achieve this goal in a jiffy. No, no. You have to work really hard. By, by making teaching enjoyable and of course learning enjoyable, the, both sides. And here, I mean, only the teacher cannot do if the students are not willing. So, learner's responsibility is important. We talked about it in the last semester as well. That, that making learner responsible, again, is the teacher's job, but the learner himself has to realize. Right? So, making both the teaching and learning enjoyable is, of course, is, is a good thing. Right? If the teacher enjoys teaching and the learner enjoys learning, of course, that is a good thing. Because in this way, the teacher would not be bored and the students would not be bored, in fact. Both would be interacting, both would be sharing, both would be doing their best. Right? So, these were our aims that of this lecture. That what? To, to present, to practice and to produce. What? That is making request or refusing request. Then also, to revise the use of simple past tense. You remember that we had a session, we had a dialogue where you asked students about their weekend and they replied. Then of course our aim was to revise some, of course any and one. We, 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 we knew that these things I mean, have been taught and we just revised. Revision my dear students is important in the class. Whenever you start a new class it's better you review the previous lesson. Because once we review, it's quite common, I have been talking about it, that you see, when you revise students, they, they create a link. They pick up the thread, fine, they link the previous class with the, the current class, of course. And in this way, my dear students, they can proceed well. And if they are unable to create that link, it would be difficult for them, right? So therefore, being a good teacher, when you course when before every lesson you need to pick up the thread you need to review like I do in every class that of course when I start a lecture I review the previous lecture and at the end again I try to give the summary of the lecture so here I mean these are the exponents could you lend me yes of course all that
Now, this is what assumed knowledge is there. We need to know what is the assumed knowledge of the students, how much they already know, and which teaching aids are there, how much time is there, and what is the procedure. Right? What would be the procedure, in fact? How, how we start, how we revise things, how we present things, fine. And what would be the presentation strategies? What would be the practice strategies? Fine. And what would be the production strategies? So it is really important. Writing can be done in the class, of course, particularly in this way. Uh, dialogue can be expected from, from the students. I mean, uh, questions can be given on the board and the students are expected to write the answers. Right? So in this way, yes, we can, we can move on, of course. Procedure of a class, of course, is important. Right? Procedure. You see, as far as procedure is concerned, being teacher, you need to be clear that, you see, what would be in the presentation stage, right? And how we can make presentation stage effective. So, again now, before we call it a day, before we finish this lecture, again I would say the old thing, that this is one of the, the lesson plans that I discussed with you on making requests and replying to those requests. Now it depends on you, how you see this model, how you see this lesson plan, and whenever you have to teach this, this topic, for example, so what would you do? What, what th new things you would bring in this lesson plan? If you have to teach this, this, this I mean, to topic, to, to a students, to adults, what would you do? If you have to teach it to, to I mean, a uh, system where it's co-education, what would you do in fact? So, you have to design it, you have to uh, change it as per your requirements, your, 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 your management objectives as well. So, my dear students, I, again I would say that yes, teaching is, is an art, and good teachers need to be innovative. They keep on thinking, right? And they keep on reviewing, right? At the end of the lesson plan, do not forget to write the points that whether it was a success or it was a failure. If you make this habit, so you will be improving, right? Otherwise, you may stuck somewhere, right? So working regularly, of course, is a must. If you work regularly, you see, and if you hold yourself accountable, so you will improve. If, if you, of course, have one pattern and you go on with it for ages, so there won't be any, there, there will be monotony. Innovation is a master. And how you be innovative if you try to be creative, and how you can be innovative if you take stock of every lesson that you teach, every lesson plan that you make. When you take stock, what happens? The next lesson naturally improves. So in this way, there would be improvement slowly and gradually. With this, it's time to say goodbye. See you in the next lecture. Salah Hafiz.